it. This is amazing, guys. Appreciate you being here. We'll be starting in just a moment. Look at all this Southwest, East Coast, Midwest, from all over New Jersey, Missouri. Awesome. There's so much synergy in the room. I'm seeing a lot of people who work in the same area. So as you're coming in, if you're just joining us, we're talking about what we do, who we serve, something about our nonprofit. We would love to know. And I'm going to get ready to start because we value your time and our time goes by so fast. So hi, thank you for joining our webinar today. Today we're going to be talking about chat GPT prompts for grant writing, fundraising, and marketing. This is going to be so good. I promise you it's going to be good. But let's talk about how we can engage today. Um, as you know, we are recording the webinar. It will be available within 48 hours. You may get it tomorrow, so look for that. Um, please use the Q&A to type your question because there's like over a thousand people registered for this webinar. So we probably will miss your question in the chat. So use the Q&A feature right at the bottom of your screen and type your question. We'll try to get to as many as possible. Again, um, we're gonna email this within 48 hours. If you need the closed caption right at the bottom of your screen, you'll see CC button. Click on that and you'll be able to use the closed caption and uh, you'll be able to watch this on a replay on YouTube with the closed caption as well. I want to get ready to move out of the way, but before I do, I want to talk about Quad. I don't know if you've heard of Quad. It's so exciting here. This is a way you can collaborate with organizations and industry leaders in the nonprofit sector and share best practices and experience. It's a membership community. And on top of this great membership community, 10 members of your nonprofit can use our courses. I don't know if you've taken any of our courses, but they're awesome. But you can allow 10 members in your organization to um, take the courses for one price. Uh, there's so many other exclusive events. So I'm going to put the link to Quad in the chat. So make sure you check that out in a moment. I'm going to move out of the way and go ahead and introduce our speakers. They're probably, you'll learn more about themselves in just a moment, but I'm going to introduce the ladies first, Miss Lisa Quigley. Um, you have probably seen her on the webinar previously, but she is, um, I, I want to say a member of Tech Work, but Lisa has been in the nonprofit sector for over 10 years and she's worked with thousands of people in the nonprofit sector. Um, Tarek, you're going to learn so much from him. He's going to be your AI prompt engineer today and you will see him going through this AI and chat GPT so fast. Just remember, you're going to get this on the replay. I'm going to move out of the way because I feel like I'm talking too much. Over to you, Lisa. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Um, I am Lisa Quigley. I'm the Director of Account Strategy for TAP Network. Um, TAP Network is a mission-based digital marketing company. Um, it is a. It was founded in... Um, Delaware, but we are a global community. So again, thank you for having me here. It's wonderful um, to be able to chat with all of you about chat GPT and AI. So I want you all to imagine a world um, where innovation isn't confined to a conference room or even a Zoom meeting, but it's at the heart of every community. And TAP Network um, envisions and strives to create that every day. So we're all about using new digital tools to tackle big social problems. And what we're seeing um, in this fast, pa fast pace and ever-changing world is that many government agencies and nonprofits are struggling to keep up. Um, and it's that they don't have the right digital infrastructure. Um, and sometimes their efforts fall short. So TAP's purpose is really to bridge this digital gap. Um, we're passionate about sharing our digital expertise with you. And by doing so, we're not only just enhancing your capacity for change, but we're also ensuring that the change is deep and far reaching and resonates with your community um, and shares your mission. So how do we do this here? Um, we developed high impact digital platforms like cutting edge websites, intuitive software, uh, apps, and data driven campaigns. Every solution we provide is designed to make a positive impact and most importantly, bring about real change. Um, 
And what sets us apart is that we have global impact, but we have a local heart. So our reach is global, but our approach is very local. Um, and we empower our partners through education. That's what we hope to do here today. And we believe that tools work best when you know how to use it. Um, so we want to make sure everyone we work with, everyone here today knows how to learn and get the most out of technology and the tools we provide. But lastly, we want to stay at the digital forefront of technology. Um, again, this world is ever changing. So with the backing of AI and user focused design, we ensure that our partners are ahead of the game. Um, this conversation today is all about te technology and how we can use that to make a difference. Um, it was so wonderful to see where you all are calling from, your organizations, and how many that you're um, reaching. And so we want to bring you this innovation, innovative solution that we're talking about today. Some people say that uh, what we're talking about is more life-changing um, and will create a greater impact on society than the um, creation of electricity or the invention of the internet. Um, but right now it's transforming how we communicate. So let's move on that. Um, let's clarify, let's lay the foundation and um, clarify a couple things about AI. Uh, there's you may have heard generative AI, um, and you may have heard about ChatGPT. We'll get a polling question in a little bit. Um, but picture this, you're shopping online and a little chat bot comes up in the corner to assist you. Um, it's helpful, but it's limited. Now imagine this version of the chat bot was supercharged and it was ready for your complex questions and tasks. So that is ChatGPT. It's not just a little chat bot. It's like a digital Swiss army knife um, and whether or not it's helping you draft grant proposals or shape fundraising pitches or create engaging, beautiful marketing materials. Um, Chat GPT, or as I sometimes call it GPT because it's a mouthful, is your digital assistant and it's available 24 seven around the clock. Um, as I mentioned, generative AI, which you've probably seen in the news, um, and ChatGPT, the terms might sound intertain interchangeable, but they really aren't. Generative AI is a broader concept. It's about creating new content, whether it's text, images, video, or even music. Um, it's like giving the computer the power to create um, based on patterns. But on the other hand, ChatGPT is a specialized use of this technology. So it's crafted for conversations and it allows uh, for human-like dialogue back and forth. It's a tool trained on huge amounts of text to interact. Um, and it interacts seamlessly with users like you and I. So in simpler terms, ChatGPT is generative AI, but not all generative AI is ChatGPT. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of background um, and lays the foundation. I did skip over the agenda, but um, after I sort of lay the foundation for uh, ChatGPT, AI, paint a big picture, then I'm gonna bring Tarek and he's gonna show you really some hands-on um, uses uh, we're going to play around with ChatGPT and other um, AI tools, and then we're going to get your Q&A. Uh, but right now, I'm going to kick off a poll, if I can. Uh, and I just want to hear from you guys. Um, how many times in this past month have you used ChatGPT? All right, so this is the first time you're hearing about it, once or twice, handful of times we're buddies or it's practically my sidekick. I'm gonna let that go for a little bit. And I'm gonna share those results with everybody. It looks like we're, there we go. So it's about 14% uh, first time, 
42%, the majority of us are have heard about it once or twice and we're just getting acquainted. So we're very happy that you're here and hopefully everybody get, gains a, something uh, from this talk. 27%, a handful of times and 18%. I can't count, it's practically my sidekick. Well, wonderful. Thank you for that. All right, so let's talk a little bit of numbers here. So platforms like Facebook took an entire year to gain a million users. Um, ChatGPT didn't take a year, it didn't take a month or even a week. It captivated a million users in just five days. By August, 2023, now it has an astonishing 1.4 billion visits. Um, moving on to its global imprint. I know we have people calling from all over the globe today. Um, the U.S. does lead the charge of users with 15%, but nations like India, Japan, and Canada really aren't far behind. Um, and as far as who's using ChatGPT, it's really all-encompassing. So the younger demographic, as you can imagine, 18 to 29, make up 40% of the users. Um, however, it is heartening to see that even the 65-plus demographic um, is on there at 5% really showing that it has wide appeal. About 32% of these users um, have a college degree at, or higher. And while they're using ChatGPT, um, many use it for entertainment, about 20%, uh, about 19% use it for education and about 16% use it to help them professionally, which is why we're all here. But looking beyond the numbers, um, and statistics. While numbers give us scale and the true measure of its impact for the true measure of its impact is in the transformation and the potential transformation. And this is why I believe some compare it um, AI to electricity. But consider this example. About 54% of the US adults have a literacy level that's below a sixth grader. And in low-income areas, a staggering 70% of 10-year-olds grapple with understanding basic reading material. Um, they aren't just numbers. They're really indicative of a societal challenge um, that demands our immediate attention. Some of you on this call um, may be dealing with health literacy, digital literacy, environmental literacy. Um, and this is where AI, particularly tools like ChatGPT, can really revolutionize how we approach these challenges. So imagine an AI tool that can adapt to an individual's learning rate, their cadence. It could cater to their unique needs and provide real-time assistance. Think of that person, maybe you know someone in your life who finds it difficult to comprehend medical read a medical prescription or a bank statement or even a public service announcement. So AI has the potential to break down these barriers and simplify complex information to make it easily understandable. So that hopefully paints a big picture, um, lays the foundation. But you may be asking, why is Chat GPT important to nonprofits? Um, it really enhances engagement. And we've found, we've worked with um, not only hundreds um, and thousands of nonprofit organizations using AI, but also government institutions. Um, and it has helped us increase engagement um, because we can provide those instant responses. We've been able to utilize it to automate routine tasks. And this allows your staff and our staff to focus on our organization's main objectives. Um, we were talking about literacy, and but in education. So you can use it as an informative resource to broaden the understanding of your or your staff's or even your constitu constituents or communities um, cause. And you can get valuable insights. It can work data, it can analyze data um, and all this without having, without straining your budget. Um, the other thing is that it can embrace diverse audiences. So ChatGPT's multi-language capacity and accessibility options really ensures that no one is left out. Okay, we've talked a lot about ChatGPT and AI. Let's get down 
to how we use it. But first things first, we have to understand what we're dealing with. So here's the deal. ChatGPT is very smart. It's Think of it as a robot that writes stuff for us. It takes little pieces of text called tokens and uses them to come up with responses. We can teach it what to say by giving examples, but we have to be very careful about, about how we do it because it learns from everything it sees. So when we ask ChatGPT for help, we do it using something called a prompt. A prompt is basically we're giving directions. So if we say, tell me how recycling helps the planet, it'll whip up a very nice explanation for us. But here's a tip. Think about your audience. Think about who you're talking to and what you want to say, um, your audience and your goals. When you're prompting, you want to keep it clear. Um, and remember, you're in charge of the voice and the tone. So do you want to make it professional, chill, serious? You can control the vibe by prompt. And Tarek is going to get um, even more into this. The other cool thing when it comes to utilizing ChatGPT for uh, your grant writing, marketing, um, is that it knows all of the copywriting strategies. There are a lot out there. And if you don't remember it or never learned it, um, don't worry. Um, you just have to prompt it correctly. So what's the takeaway? Learning these basics of prompting the terminology is essentially like getting the keys to the AI kingdom. It's really been a game changer for our work um, and it's helped us meet, reach more people. It's helped us and our partners reach more people and make a difference, which is why we're all here. Um, quickly, we'd be remiss to not give you the full picture. So chat GPT isn't the only game in town. Uh, There's some heavy hitters here and they are all doing very cool things on their own. So just quickly, um, Google Google's version is called Bard. And you can think of that as like the brainy one and it soaks up everything on the internet. We have Microsoft, they have Bing. That's another smarty pants, but it uses chat GPT-4 as its brain. Um, it's called open AI because anyone can utilize this platform. Um, so then we have Claude. Claude is one that is all about getting the conversation right. Um, similar, Jasper is more of a marketing AI tool. It helps us focus on keywords when we're writing um, and also SEO. And last but not least, Amazon is in the game as well. They have two different AI prop prompts, one for logic and one for developers. Um, but among all these, we feel that uh, ChatGPT, it's still our personal favorite. And here's why. So it talks how we talk and we can have, and I can have a conversation with it back and forth. It has a huge knowledge base. And the other great thing is that it remembers our chat. So not only does it get smarter as I continue to chat with it, but I can also refer back to it and send my, what's called a thread to others. Um, it gives really tailored answers and it can be uh, adjusted for specific jobs. Say you want it to act as a marketer. Say you want it to act as an executive director. Say you want it to act as a copywriter. It can write and give answers based on the role that you give it. Um, and you can have safer conversations. So I've included a link in this slide um, that just updates all of um, ChatGPT's policies on how to keep data safe and how they are reducing their harmful replies. And just to round out um, our chat GPT crash course, as I'd like to call it, is what's, what's happening next? So chat GPT is always getting better. They've released multiple versions and their goal is to make it easier for everyone to use and speak um, in even more language. That way more people can use it worldwide. Um, there's a lot of competition out there but they're growing in the right direction. Um, just important to mention uh, the ethical side. So with all this advance in tech, it's super important to use it responsibly. Um, ChatGPT will make sure to avoid harmful content and keep conversations private. You just have to realize that 
this is still an evolving technology and it does take a human to review. Um, and sometimes it comes up with prompts that may not be factual. So you always have to have that uh, human eye. And uh, so as we journey through the dynamic world of chat GPT and generative AI, um, I hope you can see that the, the potential for change is really endless. And um, I've said a lot of words, I've showed you a lot of numbers in the quick 10, 15 minutes here, um, but it can only go so far. So before we get to your questions, um, I'm going to turn this over to Tarek. Um, he's been working hands-on with ChatGPT for, since it, for over a year. Um, and he's going to provide you with the real world examples um, and an immersive show and tell. So Tarek, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and we will get to your questions as well. Cool. So I started sharing my screen. Let me know if you see my screen. It has a joke in it. Mm -hmm. Yes, we can see it. You see my screen? It has a joke. It's saying nonprofits have board members. ChatGPT has circuit boards. Together, they're speaking change. Hey, beautiful people, this is Tyke again, and I hope you're having an amazing day. So today we're going to talk about the ChatGPT, not the scary thing, that, uh, the tool that can change the world, that, that can uh, do the 10x productivity stuff blah 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 so if you are worried about the uh, like the ai stuff or thinking about like ai is really scary thing i'm gonna show you how we can use that tool and how this can be really impactful on our day-to-day -day basis i saw the survey result for lisa asking it's really good to see that a lot of people are using that on their day-to-day -day basis and those who are not familiar with this tangibility don't worry, because I'm going to talk about ChatGPT in depth from scratch to uh, what I can say, like to advanced level. So what I so I'm taking, I'm drinking some water because I have to talk a lot of things today. So be prepared and you need to focus only 20 minutes because that 20 minute will be everything you need to know about ChatGPT. Okay, so let's get started. So. When you go to ChatGPT, and if you are not familiar with ChatGPT, let me show you the dashboard of ChatGPT first, then I come back to the slide. So that's uh, my ChatGPT account. What you can see here, if you go to chat.openai.com, you can create an account. It's very, very, very simple. Simple than creating a Gmail account, a Google account. So I go to uh, ChatGPT, chat.openai.com, and uh, you can see a lot of things on the left-hand side, on the bottom, top. You don't have to say anything. You see, there's a box on bottom saying send a message. That's the part we have to be like where we are going to send commands. We can say we call it as a prompt. Prompt mean a text format, a text command that we are going to uh, start chat, chatting with the robot that calls GPT or chat GPT. And that's going to reply us the message. On the left hand side, you can see a lot of thread out there. You can go there and ask question and you'll have your uh, question there sorry so you can find your question there so i just want to make everything simple uh the send message part is where you are gonna ask the question and that's called the prompt so let's go to the prompt how to ask better question the better question you ask the better result you'll get so this is very very important using a chat gpt uh, just asking question that's not how you should use that you have to use chat gpt in a proper way so let me uh, give you some idea like how we can use chat gpt to get most out of it. So how ChatGPT works or the prompt works? The prompt is everything. Is uh, A prompt has two things in general. One is task and context. So task is uh, you are telling this robot or AI tool to do a particular task, let's say writing an email copy or website copy or Facebook post, whatever it is. And then you, you have to give them a context for what, for why. So that's uh, task is very easy to, provide but providing context is very very important because if you don't provide the correct information it's not going to provide you the correct answer so that's why uh, i'm going to 
talk about how we can provide better context. So uh, if you see my screen, there was a couple of things going on. It's getting the most from ChatGPT uh, for grant writing. So this is a structure that you can create. It's like organization overview. You can uh, took a screenshot or you'll get the slide uh, end of this webinar. So what you have to do, you have to go there and uh, just uh, create some uh, section for like, let's say organization overview, like write two or three sentences about your organization, your program and initiatives, challenge and needs, partnership and collaboration, social media and online presence is something you can uh, exclude or skip. A last thing is uh, additional context is like something you can say, um, testimonial is very, very important. Now what happens once you have all the information there, you can go to chat GPT. And when you are asking a question, you can, along with your task, you can provide this context. So that what happens, ChatGPT know about you better than before. Well, when you're asking a particular, when you're giving a particular prompt, you are not actually uh, giving them the right context because they don't know about your organization in depth. But by pro sending them in this kind of context structure, it becomes really easier to understand ChatGPT, who you are, I mean, who your organization is, what it does and how, uh, what kind of problem it solves then it becomes very easy to give you an answer. So let me give you an example. Okay, before I give you an example, uh, along with task and context, and as another thing you can provide is some extra example, role, preference, and uh, tone. Extra is like something you can say, let's say you are asking a particular thing and you're providing a context, but it's not providing the correct result. Then you can give an example, like you can copy, a, let's say you want to do a fundraising campaign and it's not uh, creating the correct campaign. You can. Uh, from uh, in, from the internet, you can find a, a really good fundraising campaign and pass it on ChatGPT, telling them this is the format I need and follow this format and create a fundraising campaign for me. So that means that's the example I will say. So then ChatGPT will know about more what kind of information you are looking for that can provide the better answer. So let me go to the next slide. I have to go fast because I have to cover a lot of things today. Uh, but in case if you have any question, if I miss anything, please. Go to the Q&A section, ask question. I'll do my best to answer all of your questions. So let me go to the next slide. So as an example, this is a really basic example, but I, I want to show you the prompt can be really big. It's not just one line prompt. You can you can do prompt, really long prompt, really big prompt. So here you can see, I was asking for a grant proposal and I put provide an amount and this is a fake nonprofit that we have created persona. And we are showing, uh, we are using this for an example. So what we are doing here is we're asking a proposal, like grant proposal for our urban greening network, UGN. And uh, the amount is to 250K. And then we are providing information like how you have to do, how this have to, this is not 100% uh, like um, correct or something like that. But I want to show you how we can, by providing better context, the result can be better. You can get most out of it by providing the context. So let me go to the next slide. But before I go to the next slide, let me tell you one thing. You may asking, or you may have the question like, uh, show me an example of the, sorry, uh, let me go to, show me an example of the uh, structure, context structure that I have created. So here's an example for our UGN network. So this is the structure I have created, programs and initiatives. So this is something I have written, uh, success stories, blah, blah, blah. Everything was written here. What I do normally, either I ask, uh, go to ChatGPT and ask about like provide information about my uh, organization or you can go to custom instruction and you can just, you can click on okay and you can just paste about your organization. So what happens then whenever you're asking a new question, it's actually you fetching your uh, custom instruction, custom data you already provided. So what like think about like it's kind of sticky notes like stick above your thread. So whenever you're starting a new thread, new conversation, ChatGPT actually getting the custom instruction information, it means it know about you. Now it can write better information. So you don't have to copy paste the information again and again. So I think it's, it's really good tips and I'll recommend to use that. So you will see the difference between the result you get without using custom instruction or without providing a context or with providing context, okay. So let me go to some example. Mm -hmm. So here's a fundraising prompt. <clears throat> I'm sorry. 
Uh, so it has a fundraising prompt that you can see. There's a couple of prompts we have on the ebook. Sorry. So I'm a little bit sick, so I'm having some issue. But that's fine. So here's a couple of prompts. Uh, this, these are the prompts you'll find on the ebook that we are going to give you for free. So you don't have to worry. What you have to do, you have to copy this prompt from the ebook and go to your ChatGPT account and paste it with your information. Just paste with your information and then see the result that it generate, what it create. This is really amazing. So I've been using ChatGPT for almost a year, maybe a couple of really good amount of money and i have written two ebook for you guys and uh, this is 200 300 hours of work to find some really good prompt uh, so you just have to copy that and replace the placeholder like your non-profit name replace the program or project like if you create the context structure you can just copy the information and paste it here and then go uh, copy that and go to chat gpt and paste it on chat gpt and see the result that generate uh, let me show you another example. This is for the fundraising. So this whole part is a prompt, actually. This, this is actually a complete prompt. This is not separate from only one prompt. Let me go to the next one is email marketing. That gives you another idea why you should, we should use context. So the first one, uh, if you see the first uh, part, there's a two part of, of a single prompt. The first part I'm asking, write an email marketing campaign for a nonprofit name to raise awareness of particular problems. So these are the uh, if you see the third bracket or second bracket these are the placeholder you have to replace with your information so you are replacing with the information if you just uh, copy the first one and uh, go to chat gpt and paste it and want to see the result uh, you will get a really good result but if you want to get much better result then you have to provide some information like provide a brief but comprehensive overview of your mission objective and key initiatives of the nonprofit organization you're working on. So this is very, very important. So there's uh, something I call context. So the problem with this ChatGPT is ChatGPT has really big database, but it's, it's not really specific or it's not really know about you really in depth. So you have to provide this information so that it can provide you the really good results. So here's an example on the right hand, right -hand side, you can see. And let me show you on ChatGPT account as well so to give you a better idea so let me go to uh, the first one let me see yeah that's the uh, fundraising one you can see i asked that question it generated the result let me go to the next one mm. as the second one by asking for the fundraising campaign Has a third, uh, has a third one. I can see. We're asking a couple of. Uh, it was actually for the copywriting, so you don't have to worry about. Uh, I see a lot of people asking for the prompt where I can find the prompt. You don't have to worry about because I'm gonna give you a, a complete prompt pack that include has more than twenty plus prompt for absolutely free, as a bonus, for all the attendees on the web. So I can see. We have as, act as a professional human copywriting expert. So we are giving them a role, giving ChatGPT a role that you have to follow. And then we asking uh, to write a uh, sales copy to attract, to get more donation. Then um, the whole prompt here, then we are also giving information about your, there's something I call context. So I'm, I'm giving context about our organization. What happens then? It generates really good sales copy for our landing page or website. This is really amazing. When you are going to use that, you are going to love it because you don't have to do everything from scratch. You can just go there and uh, just provide your prompt and it's going to generate the content. The thing here is like, you have to review everything properly. So let's say if, if you don't like it, and you want to get better, you can ask like, do better. Then uh, it will generate much better uh, information for you. So it becomes really easier for you. Like, it generated, let's say, it generated this particular content. Now you don't like it. You all always ask ChatGPT on the chat box, hey, make it better. Or let's say something, you, you want to add something extra here or something it did not do quite right. Then you can ask like, uh, on Amplify our mission part, let's say number three part, you can ask ChatGPT, 
can you rewrite that amplifier mission or add something to that part? Then what happens? It's gonna generate the new content with the information you are asking. Also, a lot of people ask like, um, how can we uh, save? Uh, how can we generate unique content? One of the simple prompts that you can use, uh, there's a lot of tool out there that you can use to actually um, rewrite that content to make it really unique. But to make it easier for you, one thing you can do after your prompt that you're asking, uh, that you're providing to ChatGPT, you can ask, uh, do not copy or plagiarize. Do not copy from external sources or plagiarize. What happens then? ChatGPT will know it can't actually copy any extra sources. You have to create a unique content. Also, it needs to be keeping in mind the content needs to be not plagiarized. So you are giving them instruction. Also, you can say, uh, if the tone is not really helpful, you can ask like, can you uh, act like a professional copywriting expert with 20 years experience who has professional, and uh, like who is, who is really professional, who has uh, like, um, warm tone or what kind, whatever tone you want you can ask that on the prompt so the the much better question you ask the better result you'll get so uh, i have the ebook for you like let me show you the ebook first very quickly so that's the free version of our ebook uh, that you are going to get uh, that has so let me let me do a quick uh, tour of the ebook here you can see So um, there, there's a couple of categories out there like email marketing, grant proposal, um, has the prompt. It has also answer, example, and the prompt as well. You just have to copy that, like let's say copy and go to ChatGPT, replace the placeholder and paste it. That's it. You don't have to do anything. In case uh, if you want to uh, change anything or if it's not generating 100% result, then use the context method that I have discussed before. So the better question you ask, the better result you will get. So then we have social media marketing and we have some resources for you. Like if you want to generate images, if you want to generate um, uh, images, if you want to generate any uh, voice, video, anything like this, we have the resources added on the ebook as well. So let me go back at the first part. So that's the ebook you are going to get. So you don't have to worry about that. Just copy that and paste it. Copy the prompt, paste it. You have everything you needed. So that's pretty much uh, to give you an idea about how to use ChatGPT and how to give a better uh, context, better information, and get better results. So let me go to the slide again. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's the slide. <clears throat> There's a couple of alternatives out there. There's not one, two, three. That's a really good amount of competitor of chat GPT, but none of them can really beat GPT on a high level. Uh, there's Google Word, there's a Cloud. So I'll recommend you like if you want to get uh, generated really good content, let's say for email marketing, for social media marketing or social media post newsletter, I will recommend to check out the Cloud because uh, it can provide more accurate answer and more better results. So uh, I would recommend to copy the prompt, replace the placeholder, and test on the three platform and see which one performs better in case if you want to get good results. Another thing to forgot, uh, another thing I forgot to tell you is these uh, prompt are for like, it's really working for the 3.5. That means uh, GPT 3.5. That means the free version of the chat GPT. You don't have to use the paid version in order to use that prompt. These are absolutely free to use so if i show you my uh, account that's the account i have without pro version i don't have the plus version but the free version is enough to get started i will recommend you to start with chat gpt uh, slowly slowly then when you're thinking that this is a really game changer tool then upgrade it to the plus so let me go back to the slide again so there's the all couple of alternatives out there for google word and Claudia, Claudia is really, uh, this Claudia will be the top recommended tool to try out. But if you want to stick to one tool, that will be GPT. None of them can beat GPT. So let me go to the next slide. This is the ebook that you're gonna get for free. 
and it has 20 plus prompt resource and everything you need it i'll just take uh, took a 30 second break then i'll come back So I'm back. So that's a bonus you are going to get. You don't have to worry. A lot of people are typing why I am going to get that ebook. Uh, you are going to get that ebook on your email after the webinar ends. So don't worry about that. You are going to get that. If you still don't get the free ebook, please reach out to me. I'll send you the ebook copy personally. And uh, you will have everything you need for on the free version of uh, ebook. I also have a upgraded version, but I'll recommend uh, this, those who are already using ChatGPT and were already uh want to get the expert version then you can get our pro version uh, that we have it has 80 plus ChatGPT prompts it has a mid journey google word and it has tons of resource library it covers 15 plus categories like uh, press release uh, web copywriting and tons of categories like email copy it has uh, email i think it has uh, 30 plus email prompts and i've spent around 200 plus hours by uh, writing this is really cheap i think it's only cost and less than going out for a lunch uh, so uh, this is recommended for someone who already using that uh, who already using chat gpt for everyday basis and they want to get the expert version you can get that and if you're just starting out I'll, i will not recommend you to get that i'll recommend you to use the free version this is enough for you and i hope this will be really helpful it has uh, fundraising copywriting uh, grant proposal email marketing and social media prompt that you needed and these are all super prompt anytime uh, if you are not getting the result again just to sum up everything if you are not getting the good result always uh, use the context please you have to provide the information keep in this mind if it's not providing the right answer that means it is not uh, it is having issue i mean gpt having issue knowing about you knowing about the task properly okay people asking how where to get the paid version uh, you can go to tapnp.ai. That's our website. Tapnp.ai to buy the ebook right away. Uh, that's our version two going on. I'm working on the version 3.0, and the 3.0 will have tons of more prompt, and it also has the GPT-4 prompts and a couple of other tool prompt in it. So if you purchase the ebook today, you will also get the uh, updated version for absolutely free when we have that launch. So uh, let me sum up everything. I hope that gives any clear idea how to use ChatGPT and how to use ChatGPT better and how to opti utilize these resources. So I will jump into, I think Lisa, can you hear me? Uh, I think uh, you can too. Okay. Would you like to go through um, some questions? I... Let's okay. jump into a few questions and then I can get into our um, marketing and support services. Well, so this the just I have a question for you, Tarek, because you've used them all. If you could just quickly talk about the um, pros and cons of using ChatGPT versus Bard um, or any of the uh -huh. other ones. I mean, from my experience, you know, <laughs> we we can talk about this internally, but um, Bard has access to real, the, inter the internet, it's up to date. Um, I prefer using a combo, but what do you think about the using the differences and when you use which? Uh, Bard is really good uh, when it comes to uh, web accessibility and up-to-date feature. <clears throat> but one thing to keep in this mind, you can't beat ChatGPT. ChatGPT is the king of AI universe. I'm not getting paid from ChatGPT, but I want to let you know that ChatGPT is the first tool you have to get started. Then you can, you can look for Claude, Entropic, Llama, or Kuhair, or any other tool if you have time. But the one and only tool to get started will be ChatGPT. And to answer your question, Lisa, ChatGPT4 recently announced their web accessibility feature. So if you have the upgraded version, you can use the web browsing feature so that you can browse the internet and ask, uh, get the relevant information. 
So that will be helpful. And in case if you want to uh, use the free version, I mean web accessibility thing, we'll always use Google Word. But Google Word has really good feature as well. Uh, they actually work really good when you, when you have like, uh, when you are, let's say, searching on something for on Google. Without searching on Google, go to Google Word and ask that question. It will provide you better response, better result. Mm -hmm. And you talked and about also a little bit, but the free versus the paid version, uh, from my understanding and experience, the paid version tends to um, give a lot less um, for for chat GPT. When you up upgrade, you pay the 12, I think it's $12.99 a month. I find that it provides a lot um, more accurate of information, less inaccurate information. Are there any other differences between the paid version of ChatGPT and, and free that you want to mention? Okay. Can you repeat the question again? Are there any okay. other differences be besides um, accuracy of information between ChatGPT, the free version, and the paid version? Um, yes. ChatGPT 3.5 and 4 are two different models. So this is uh, actually, uh, they have 3.5 and 4 model. So uh, of course, the paid version will be better than the free version. But if you want to get started, you can always use the free version. You don't have to upgrade right now. Only upgrade when uh, you think it's time to <laughs> upgrade. Uh, along that, uh, you don't have to upgrade that. You can use the free version. This is enough for a lot of people to get started. But... Uh, if you upgrade on pay, uh, paid plan, I mean 20 bucks plan, this will be the best um, investment so far because uh, I personally say this is, uh, if you want to spend on an employee, uh, then spend on ChatGPT uh, Pro plan because you, you can have a 20 bucks employee per month who can do 24 by seven works every day for you, every week. Awesome. Um, a couple more questions. We have a lot of great questions. One was about I one, two. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, when you can assign roles, you and I were both talking about um, prompting ChatGPT and having it be a creative director, a copywriter. Um, and someone says, "How can you assign roles? Such as you're a rabbi, you're the victim of se sexual abuse." And um, this is very helpful when. Um, putting your audience in there, um, when putting characteristics, demographics, things that you know about the audience, and then, and then you can rely on ChatGPT to fill in that information, um, to write something from the perspective of that audience or that persona. Um, so it's a balance between you providing the information that you know, as well as the information, um, that it it gives back, um, and and we do this this a lot, especially working with various um, various audiences. So that was uh, there's another. I was actually answering some question. Yeah, mm -hmm. go ahead. I was actually answering some question. Uh, people are asking, uh, what's the URL of the pro version of our ebook? Is tap t a p p n p dot a i t a ppnp.ai. Lisa, you can pronounce that better. So whoever asking, you can get it on the free version. You, you are going to get that on your email after this webinar. If you don't get that, please reach out to me personally. I'll send you the copy for absolutely free. Um, there was another question about copyright and IP um, in proposal language. And for the most part, once you produce content using ChatGPT, you own the rights, but that is not a blanket statement. And they're always updating the rules and the regulations. And we can put the link to ChatGPT's um, legal page and legalese on there. Um, however, there are certain instances where we could say it's not a copyright. If you're developing a picture, um, an image, potentially using Midjourney or another um, AI, and then you tend to put it on a product and sell it, um, that is is typically not allowed. However, the content that you produce 
um, if it was for a grant or social media, that is, you would hold the rights to that. So hopefully that answers. Um, uh, uh, there's a couple of questions. Can I ask, answer a couple of questions? Um, yep. Uh, was this presentation based on free version of ChatGPT? Yes, the free version and the free version of the ebook as well. Absolutely free. Use that, please. Use it at least for one time and you are going to love that. Uh, uh, I tried to uh, play with ChatGPT a few months ago, but I, it wanted uh, uh, it wanted payment. Free version, how do I get it? It's really easy. Just go uh, sign up for an account, uh, create a free account, and you will have the free version created. You don't have to upgrade that. Um, uh, should you update the custom instruction often or set it and forget it? It's mostly, uh, I have uh, two different ChatGPT account and uh, for my task, day-to-day -day task, I, I'm not using custom instruction often because my task uh, related to dynamic question, I mean dynamic role. So I'm not actually asking a lot of questions, but whenever I, I do testing with my prompt uh, for nonprofit, I use custom instruction so that it become consistent and I don't have to provide every, I don't have to provide uh, context every time I ask a question. Why do you find custom instruction? Let me show you. Very, very simple. Uh, you go to bottom, uh, you go to your account and there's an option for custom instruction where you can put your custom instruction. Very easy. If you don't see that, you can go to settings and on the beta version, you can enable that. Uh, don't worry about that. And Alisa, do you want to go? Um, sure. Well, there's okay. Well, uh, George is asking a question before Tarek ends. Can he reshow the screen of uh, what we should include about a project NGO mission, etc.? Before we uh, start asking ChatGPT, can you, uh, Lisa, can you elaborate on that, please? Project yeah. NGO. I'm sorry. Uh, did you see the question of George? Cummings on Q&A. Okay. Um, we buy, did you say we will get an updated book? Yes. When, uh, yes. That if you went on there and, and bought the paid version, you will get an updated version when it comes out. There we go. Um, our emails are on the slides um, and we can also put them in the chat. Um, I'll let, there's a question. There will, there are some interesting comments, um, and questions in the chat. And I agree, Tarek and I are trying to go through those now. Um, maybe Aretha will let us know at the end if they will be shown in the recording, because I am unsure of that. Um, so, uh, Katie asks, how can you get AI to help finding images we may want to complement the text? And what about using AI to help and create charts and graphs? Um, this is something that we've used internally as an agency and we've seen it grow, um, the capabilities over the past couple months and it's continuing to be enhanced. Um, platforms like Canva, which also have a free and paid version, now have AI integrated. So you could type the theme of your text, a child reading um, a mountainside with a woman standing on it, and it will generate and find those pictures for you. Um, and there are other examples um, and many platforms that have that capability. I think it's one of the things that I find so amazing is that because it is open AI and anyone can access the code to create this, um, a lot of new businesses, a lot of entrepreneurs are creating tools um, that we can use. And it, and it really levels the playing field between um, big corporations with huge marketing budgets um, and nonprofits. Okay. Uh, do you want to share your screen? Uh, should I start stop sharing? Should I stop share? Uh, sure. And we have a couple more minutes. And I did see um, some questions about TAP, um, our services, and being able to utilize our expertise. So I will just explain that. And feel free, Tarek, to um, look through the questions as I'm looking through 
going through this and um yes <laughs> uh, people some people are asking uh, i just uh saw some people are chatting about like I, there was a type on marketing they have very good eye on that thank <laughs> you so one thing is make uh, a difference between ai and human is human made mistakes ai did not <laughs> so <laughs> that was by type by me not by the ai so if you want to have something really unique that can be detected by any AI tool that was written by AI, just made some typos. Then the tool never think like this is written by AI because human will make mistakes, not AI. But whenever you get a result, generated result using um, any chat GPT or any um, NLP based tool, please we check, double check the information before you use that. I also send the uh, link of the ebook the paid version the uh, we call the experts version on chat so in case if you have an issue you can go there and you will get the free version of the ebook on your email so you don't have to worry about that um all right so as techsoup's exclusive provider for um digital services you can go onto their website and under website services you'll um explore um, some of the services that we have. Here is a bigger menu of everything from strategy to inbound marketing to branding um, that we do as an agency, um, including, and everything, as we mentioned, is not only growth driven, but it's also unique to you. We understand that non each nonprofit has a unique set of goals and missions and we and budget, and we make sure that um, this our services are tailored to you so um there is a link to our website as well as our emails not only the general sales email but at the beginning of the powerpoint um Tarek's email is there as as well as mine and our linkedin profile so feel free to connect and uh, we'd love to hear from you any other um questions Tarek, that you've seen Mm, yes, I'm that. answering a couple of questions on Q&A. So, yes, there's tons of questions. I think I need a really good amount of time to answer everything. <laughs> but, uh, yes, one of the things uh, I'll recommend everyone, please don't overthink this uh, tool. This is really, really, really easy to use tool. Please never overthink that you have to write really good prompt, how you are going to get that prompt. That's why I have the free version of the ebook. Please use that prompt. I generate results and start using that. Then you are going to love that. But most of the people can get started because of their thinking this is really, really tough. They, uh, they will need some sort of uh, knowledge, technical knowledge to uh, start working on that. So that's why I recommend, please just create an account after this webinar and um, start writing, asking any question you have and you are going to love that. And if you like this webinar, please, don't forget to uh, uh, share your knowledge, uh, sorry, share your feedback on chat. That will encourage me to write or create a better uh, product for you guys. Thank you, everyone.